to drop off if we don't. Not usual. All right, we got people pouring in here. Woo, look at all these excited attendees that are here to listen to Joel from Black Lab and eSinch. Gosh, usually it takes a few minutes, but here we're already up over 50 attendees. So oh, wow. Everyone's just look, at how, look at how popular we are. <laughs> You guys will notice there's a lot going on on the screen here. Um, we're working through some technical issues because that's, you know, Mercury retrograde, everybody. Um, Joel has his computer set up so that we can see his slides. And he's also got his phone because the internet um, was causing a lag. So he dialed in on his phone. So hopefully we won't have that lag. Um, Joel, can we hear you yet? No. Can you? Unmute yourself on your computer. There we go. Can you go. hear me now? Yes. Hey. Awesome. awesome. All right. Well, typically I wait a few minutes and let people pour in to start the entry, but we were a few minutes late working with the technology and it looks like there's a ton of people here already. So uh, to start these off, if this is your first time joining us uh, for one of the Mobile Bev Pros webinars. Uh, congratulations on uh, signing up and actually making it here. Very excited for today's topic. Um, for anybody who kind of follows me, even remotely close, I've been posting quite a bit about eCinch. Um, I use them for Bar Magnolia. I just went out and spent a few days with both Joel and Lee um, out in Colorado. Um, really awesome, awesome trip and saw the beautiful mountains of Colorado, which was really cool. And uh, while I was out there, learned that both Lee and Joel have more than just a software company in common. They have a ton of super valuable information that I thought would be really, really helpful for all the mobile bars um, to, to benefit from. And they graciously offered to do a webinar, not on eSinch, but actually what kind of uh, really enabled them to rise above the cream of the crop um, in their you know, specific, uh, Joel owned, still owns and operates um, a mobile bar company out in LA. And Lee actually was on the event planning side, but um, also did mobile bar uh, pieces in, in his um, event planning uh, capacity. So we've got a ton to cover today. I do want to give everyone a little bit of, of the lay of the land. So Usually you guys dial in and you hear me speak. I'm not gonna be doing a ton of speaking today. Joel will be handling the vast majority. Lee will uh, be his support uh, person. I'll pop in with questions here and there. Both Lee and I will be in the chat and the Q&A. As Joel's talking, um, if Lee can answer something, he will. We can also mark things to be addressed live. We'll probably uh, bring Joel some questions during the course of his, his presentation, but then we'll have a Q&A at the end as well. Um, they do have a little special something for anybody who has um, who sticks around until the end of uh, the, the webinar. So if you have to drop out for any reason, I will be sending around a recording that'll be live for 24 hours for anybody who wants to finish up and kind of find out what, what uh, they're presenting at the end. And there's the chat function and then there's the Q&A section. So the beautiful thing about the Q&A section is that we can address it, we can um, answer live or we can type an answer. In the chat, you can use that. Just know it's harder for us to keep track of things that are asked in the chat because more people chat and then it gets lost. Also, historically people have accidentally sent it to one person instead of everybody or to the, the panelists. So if you're asking a question, make sure that you're not just sending it to one of the attendees and that it's actually coming to one of us. The best case scenario is to use the Q&A section. All right. Um, I think I think that's pretty much it for the lay of the land here. Now let me officially introduce. Uh, we. What am I, am I, okay, I'm introducing Lee first, right? I know that we had uh, a little plan here, but Lee is the COO of eSinch. 
um, a ton of information to share with us. He helped Joel put together the presentation today. Um, I've spent uh, a good amount of time talking with Lee about all things, uh, both business and non-business. And uh, so I'd like to consider him a good friend of mine. So welcome uh, to this workshop, Lee. Happy to have you here. Thanks so much, Sarah. I really appreciate it. And everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, this is more about Joel and his journey um, at Black Lab events. And so rather, Joel will talk obviously mostly on the presentation, but I'll make a bit of an intro for Joel just so you know his background. But Joel was a Texas native um, who moved to LA and took the restaurant and bar scene um, by storm. And he's trained some of the biggest leading mixologists and curated um, nationally recognized bar programs, including Mixology Bar, Com Com CA and Los Balcones in Hollywood. Um, on top of that, you know, he's had his strengths in restaurant and bar operations, which led him to consult for national brands like House of Beauty, Foundation Room, Tom's Urban and um, US, Area USA. He's got over 16 years of experience in the liquor industry. Um, that he's had 11 years at Black Lab events. Um, that's coming up this April. And um, basically just for the need to improve this industry, um, that was part of the reason why he created Essence. Um, so with that, um, I'll pass it over to Joel and I'll let him take it from here. Awesome. Can you guys hear me okay? Loud and clear. <laughs> Loud and clear. Awesome. Thanks guys for joining. Uh, Lee, my amazing COO, he, he doesn't brag about himself, but he actually worked for the catering division at CAA for Drago, which is one of the largest catering companies in LA. Um, he's worked on some startup software companies as well in the event space. So he's definitely a resource. So as you guys ask questions, he may, he may build some of those. Um, but yeah, thank you for showing up. So what we're going to talk about today is how I grew my business from, you know, nothing almost 11 years ago to now six figure income. Um, 2019, we did about a half a million in revenue just for our bar business. Um, for our bar and catering, it was closer to 2 million. Um, and um, how, how I kind of took my business from my home to, to uh, being one of the largest mobile mixology bar companies in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, in 2018, I'll let you guys know, I actually don't even live in Los Angeles anymore. I moved away, so I don't even live in the same city as my, um, as my business at the very end of 2018. And then in 2019, I implemented um, the software essence that I invented, which is my sales software and basically what allowed me to move away uh, and kind of work mobily um, that and, you know, having partners and having 10 years of experience and growing my business and not being the sole person that does all the production anymore, all of those things. But um, I actually grew my business 68%. Um, what does this say? Sorry, guys. Everyone would like to. Okay. I don't know what that was saying. Um, I grew my business 68% in 2019, and that was the first year I was not living in the same city as my business. Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about today is kind of my journey, um, some of the trials and tribulations I went through that you guys could avoid, and um, being able to, you know, grow your business to be what you want it to be. So I'm going to share my screen. We'll see if we can get this working. Since technology has been fighting us today. Okay. Um, you guys have my screen? I'm going to assume yes. Lee, Sarah, screen, yes? Yeah. All, all good. Okay, great. So let's get into this. So we got a lot to cover. Um, guys, just so you know, Lee will drop in the comments, but you can go to e-cinch.com slash webinar dash or slash rapid dash growth dash webinar and download the presentation today. Um, that way you have access to come back to it later and kind of work on some of the things that we're talking about. There are examples in here that we'll go through. Um, so the first thing when you are either setting up your business or honestly every few years you should re-examine every part of your business. Um, and, and one thing would be, you know, knowing who your clients are, knowing who you're marketing to. You may start your business marketing to like backyard parties and friends and family, but you want to grow maybe into being able to target corporate clients and, and get those big like celebrity events and those type of things. So you constantly need to re-examine where you are, look at your branding, um, look who your clients are and who you're positioned towards. So 
before you can even get into the branding and stuff, I suggest you start with knowing who your clients are. And the best way to do that is to create a perfect customer persona. And we're going to switch over to this slide. And this is an example of a perfect customer persona that I've created that should look like you guys. So this is what I created, not for Black Lab, but for Essence and um, targeting mobile bar caterers. So there should be a lot of similarities between you and the attributes on this slide. Um, the first thing when you're setting up your customer persona, you want to identify who are you targeting? Are you targeting people? Are you targeting businesses? Or are you targeting both? In a lot of cases with our industry, we're targeting both, right? Um, so you'll need to have different customer personas for the different people or industries that you're targeting. When you're targeting businesses, you want to look at who in that business can hire me. So is it a, is a head of marketing? Is it a head of events? Um, you got to figure out who in the business that you're targeting, and then that's the persona that you're going to create because you need to be able to find them in targeted ads down the road and with targeted marketing. So you want to dive as deep as you can. Um, for you guys, I'm looking for mobile bev pros. I'm looking for the owner or the co-founder of the company. Company size is usually pretty small, one to three to, for, for, for mobile beverage businesses just starting out, doing about 50 to 300K a year in revenue. And you guys are super active on Instagram mainly, but Facebook as well. So that's kind of the high like level profile, but then you wanna go really deep with the background and interest. You wanna identify what ratio of, of, of gender, um, the age, um, you know, are they single or married? Do they have kids? Do they not have kids? Um, what type of degree do they have? Um, what type of education? What type of uh, jobs um, do they have? Whether it's, it's um, you're targeting businesses or, or brides, um, all of that information is relevant uh, to help you target um, when you're doing targeted ads and stuff. And then you want to know their interests as well. Um, so for you guys, obviously, cocktails, bartending, craft spirits, uh, the United States Bartenders Guild, all of these ways are ways that I can find you online and put my ads in front of you. So the same rules apply to your brides, to your grooms, um, to your corporate clients and all of that. So create the perfect customer personas. Um, do this first. And then the next thing that you're going to look at, I'm going to come back to this page, is your branding and your messaging. Um, and again, You'll want to re-examine this every few years. My logo, my actual brand name, everything's different from when I first started. When I first started Black Lab, um, I had a uh, Mad Men style logo that I had created, and our colors were red and black. Now my colors are brown and dark brown, and we have a little circle thing, and you'll see. I'll show you guys my website here in a second. But you always want to be looking at your branding and, and growing it to match the times and to match the people that you're targeting. The easiest way um, to come up with your branding is uh, hire someone if you're not a, a content person. So you can – I used Fiverr. Um, we actually used Fiverr for eSense to have a guy come and help us create our branding and logo. I'm the type that I'm going to sketch out and say, here's what I'm thinking, but then have a professional really bring it to life for us. And so this is what brand your brand guidelines should look like. You should have defined your, your primary and secondary fonts, primary and secondary colors, and then all of your different logo types and your icon. And this is important, too not only for if you're going to be redesigning your website, but in all of the marketing that you do. If you hire an agency to help you with uh, social media marketing, they're going to need all of these guidelines to follow so that your messaging and your branding stays, um, you know, consistent across all of the platforms that you're marketing on and with everyone that you're working with. So um, super important to, to um, set up your brand guidelines and, and have those in place. And again, Think about the people that you're targeting. What, what are they like? What type of feelings are they going to be attracted to? And start to try to bring your brand to meet, like, the vision that you want people to see in you. Um, all right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is SEO. Um, so once you have, you know, your website all designed out or redesigned or built, if you haven't built a website yet, definitely do that first. But then you want people to be able to find your website and uh, having organic SEO practices in place is very important. So um, how, how SEO works, just a quick um, overview, is Google crawls your website, all websites, usually every month, two months, three months, Google's going to come and crawl your site. 
they're going to look at the titles, which is called the H1s, the first, the headings, the H2 and H3s. Those are the three heading types that, that live on a website, and then your normal text. They're going to read the first 1,000 words of your site, um, and that's, and then, then also if you, on the back end of your site, can plug in SEO, which like Squarespace, Wix, all the site builders now give you the ability to put, plug in SEO descriptions and titles. Um, so you want to do that, but you don't want to just guess at what you know, the titles are going to be. You want to go, so Google basically, it's going to scrape my site and figure out what I'm relevant in terms of the queries that people are searching for. So to reverse engineer SEO, you want to understand what are people searching for that can find me. So these are actually for you guys. When you download these slides, you'll have these, but these are the keywords I already did um, like this two days ago, just to make sure they're well relevant in terms of if someone's going to find me for my bar catering services, these are the main keywords that are being searched. These are the top seven. And then these are the top seven search phrases, both important. And then this is actually my black lab um, heading and my SEO description that I use um, on my site on the back end where I plug my SEO in. Uh, you guys can take this. This is, this is free of charge here. Um, and, and it's been working for me um, for, for quite some time. Again, with SEO, you wanna go back every year or so and make sure that these still keywords and phrases are, um, are relevant. So as in business, it's, it's a constant, it's a constant going back, recreating, going, keeping going. You can't ever be stagnant. As soon as you get stagnant, that's when your competition comes in and takes you out. Um, so now we're here to targeting clients, um, and this is for social media ads. So I do all my ads on Facebook Ads Manager, and then I'll set my ads to go out across all platforms, so Facebook, Facebook Instagram, um, and then affiliate networks. And then I'll let the Facebook al algorithm decide you know, where to place my ad based on the targeting and the people I'm targeting, where it's going to be most relevant, and I'm going to get um, the best bid cost. Um, I always do my ads um, by, by best bid cost and to link clicks to my site. But how you set up your ads um, are, is important, but the most important thing is who you're targeting. So this um, is my wedding demographic for Southern California. Um, so the locations may not be relevant to you guys, depending on where you're at in the world. But when you're looking to geo-target your location, don't just put your city go and target the highest end neighborhoods in your city, especially if you're going after luxury clients, go to the nicest neighborhoods, target them. Um, and, and then in your surrounding cities as well. Um, so that you're showing your ads to people that are in the demographic that you, you, you want to hire you that, you know, have expendable income uh, and can, and so events. Um, the other super important thing are the people who we're, we're matching with. So this is my wedding, um, audience. I have multiple audiences. I have a corporate audience. Um, I have a general audience. I have a wedding audience. So with the wedding audience, one of the most important things is that you um, uh, have the filter for relationship status engaged. Life event, newly engaged six months, newly engaged one year, newly engaged three months. So anytime a person on Facebook switches their status from single to engaged, they're going to see their ad, you know, they're getting married and you want to put your ads in front of them. So that's the biggest one, even more than all of these other ones. The other thing not to forget, even though I'm targeting wedding clients, who else can bring me wedding clients, right? Event planners, venues, caterers. So I target people within the industry here under employers, event planning, event planning, uh, event planner, event organizer. So there's a lot of um, people within the industry because I get, hired a ton um, or referred a ton by other people within the industry that I've worked with. So that's super important. Um, we'll move on. Let me come back a couple slides just to make sure I covered everything. Oh, and market research is one thing that we, we didn't. I'm glad I came back to here. So the market research, you guys know how to do market research, but it's super important, um, you know, go to your, your competitors and, you know, go undercover and get a proposal from them. See what they're charging. Not that you want a price match, but you want to know where you're going to position yourself in relationship to the competition. In fact, I don't recommend price matching. 
Um, I recommend you deciding what lane you want to be in. Are you going to target luxury? Are you going to be the guy that um, has the more affordable services in town? Both are fine, but you got to understand where you're going to position yourselves and be, at least in the beginning, super targeted towards where, where you want to target. Um, so definitely do your market research. All right, let's jump back to competitive advantage. Um, so by far the best way that I've grown my business and the most effective way is through networking. Uh, and I know you guys all know this, but yet now I'll say it, it's written there three times for a reason, because it's that important. Referrals are the best leads you can get. Um, you know, someone's telling a person how great you are and they're coming in to meet you knowing already from a friend, a family member, whoever, that you're great. So it's basically just up to you to close the deal. I mean, you don't even really have to sell them. They already know you're great. They've already built the trust. And in our industry, since we're a high ticket industry, right, we're selling our services for thousands of dollars. Um, the trust is one of the main things that closes the deal. So network as much as you can. I, I think in every city, there are event industry networking group. Get to know the planners. The planners are the ones that can hire you. Also the photographers. Like when someone gets engaged to get married, they go to the photographer first. Um, to get portraits done, you know, and all that stuff. So get in with the photographers, offer them a kickback, offer them, you know, hey, I'll give you 5% of a booking or 10% or, or whatever you can afford. Generally five to 15% the, the margin. I never do 15. The max I go is 10. I always try to go five to 10 because I want to keep my profits. Um, obviously social media, we don't need to jump in that. You guys are all on social media. If you're not, I'm sorry, <laughs> but get on social media. Um, and then the social proof, um, this is like a referral, but for your website, get testimonials, have people tell how great you are, put those on your website, put those in your ads. Again, people are going to trust you a lot sooner if they hear it from someone else's mouth than yours. Um, newsletters and blogs, obviously a great way to prove yourself as an authority in the industry, not only to clients, but to other vendors. So you need to prove yourself to both people because other vendors aren't going to recommend you if you um, they don't think that you're awesome, you know, because it's their reputation on the line as well when they rec recommend you. So that's, again, why going to the networking events is so important and even sponsoring them. So I've sponsored a lot of networking events. I'll do everything out of pocket. I'll bring all the gear, bring, a, bring some great cocktails, bring my best staff. And, um, and that is a great way to spend money. I would recommend doing that before you ever do Facebook ads or social media ads. It's way more effective. People can taste and feel your services, and you will book way more events from that than spending $1,000 on a social media ad rather than sponsoring the right networking event, right? Make sure it's the right event um, and your customers are going to be there. But it's definitely the best way to go. And then last but not least is PR. Who can afford PR? None of us. Um, but I've never hired a PR person, but I have been featured in People Magazine, Us Magazine, Martha Stewart. Um, and why? Because I make sure I attach myself to all of the big events where I can get PR from the event. Um, and how I do that, offer a discount, offer my services for free if it's the right event with a big enough PR splash. Um, and sometimes you don't even have to. The Us Magazine, we did a celebrity wedding and it just happened to be written up. Um, I got that celebrity wedding. Uh, a caterer referred me, so referrals. And uh, the caterer didn't even get written up and we did because our cocktails were so great, which was, he, he called me and was a little irritated by that. But hey, what are you going to do? You gotta, you gotta be great. And that's the other thing, guys, you're not gonna get referrals at the event unless you execute flawlessly. Every event, every time. I can't say that enough. Execute flawlessly. Um, but yeah, also you can reach out to local news stations and see if they wanna do like a drink segment. Um, that's a pretty easy way to get some great PR. And then there are some press release sites that you can write your own press release and put them out for free. Um, some of those sites will get you on Google News, but I would say once you've exhausted all other marketing efforts, then do something like that um, because I think everything else uh, would be more effective. But, you know, just another idea of how to get your name out there for free. Um, and, and this, you know, by doing all these things, you need to be the in influencer in the industry. So I'm definitely known within my industry, not only because of Black Lab events, but Lee mentioned I consulted on a lot of huge bar openings, the House of Blues, uh, Tom's Urban was a $9 million opening at LA Live that we did. Um, and, and I, you know, over just years and years of work and being at the right restaurants with the right VR companies as well, 
uh, as a bar manager, built my name up to be an authority as one of the top mixologists in the world. Um, and that's how I started Black Lab. All right. So now let's okay. get to the good part. Oh, Joel, yeah. I'm just going to give mm -hmm. you an opportunity to like take a drink of water, take a, take a breather before we move forward. For everyone else, I want you to pull out your phone. I want you to open up your Instagram app. I want you to go to the search function, type in e dot cinch, and they should pop up right here. This is their little thingy, you see that? Click it, follow, give Joel some love because what he has just shared with you guys is game-changing. SEO, actual keywords that you can use to plug in, right? Like this is this is golden stuff. Um, we're getting a question from Davina. The name of his mobile bar company is um, Black Lab Events, right, Joel? Black Lab Events, yeah. Uh, the website's blacklab-ventures.com and I'm about yep. to show it to you guys. Yeah, so he'll show you that in just a second. Um, but all of, I mean, all of the stuff that he's uh, shared so far, these are things that um, some of this stuff I, I have kind of already talked to you guys about. Ideal client worksheet is in the membership. I have a branding template so you can drag all your colors, your fonts and you know all of that. Use those for PR, You know, go in the membership, find that template, put all your stuff in there. Just start emailing the local news station, your newspapers. They are looking for feel good stories right now, I promise you. So like take that opportunity. I you know, I mentioned it in the comments. You know, one a day. It just takes one email a day. It doesn't matter if every day, you know, you get something back, but just make put it a checklist item. Wake up this morning, who can you reach out to? Visibility at this stage is really really important for you. And it can be one email at a time. Ideally, you're you're going to email the amplifiers first, right? So who are those? Joel mentioned a few. He, you know, the uh, venues, event planners, and photographers. Those those can be your amplifiers, um, and not just you know wedding event planners, but corporate event planners, caterers. Joel, you know, has talked a, a bunch about working directly with caterers, right? So he, I mean, we're 20 minutes in. There's a ton of gold here. So give them a follow. Um, we're only halfway through this, this presentation though. So uh, I just wanted to give you kind of a little break there and let anybody who had any questions, um, you know, pop in and then uh, you're welcome to take it away. Cool. Thank you so much. Appreciate the love. Sarah's our best cheerleader. We love her. Um, so, all right, now let's go and talk about making money. Cause we still got, oh, hold on. Someone's trying to call me. No. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yeah? Okay, cool. Yes, we can still hear you. Um, awesome. So let's talk about making money. Um, so now we've got all of our marketing, you know, situated. We know how, how to get our clients. We know who our customers are. Now we need to convert those clients from leads to cash. My favorite part. <laughs> um, so on this section, we're just going to go over on high level how to price. Um, there's some certain areas of pricing I've heard from different bar caterers that they that need some help. So we'll get into that. Um, uh, how to, how I convert leads. And then, um, and then I'll probably come back to this slide and just uh, give you guys some hacks. Well, we'll go over these hacks probably throughout when I'm talking to you guys, but um, you know, you can check those out out here. One, one of the biggest ones that I want to make sure I don't forget, I'm going to mention it now is, is get commissions from the vendors that you sell. So, um, any, any rentals guys that you do for clients, any outside caterers, the liquor companies that you may work for retail, try to set up kickbacks. I get a commission from everyone. If I sell their stuff, not only do I charge a service fee um, of 15%, but I'm getting 10% on uh, a back-end commission from all the vendors that I, I sell their services. Super important. It's a great way to expand your margins, create more revenue streams for your business. Um, and we'll probably touch on that again because it's an important one. But let's first talk about pricing for profitability. So one thing is you guys need to define your cost for everything that you're selling. I know it seems like a pain, but you don't know if you're making money unless you know that you're making money. And you should know exactly how much money you're making. So uh, I'm sure you guys um, have seen recipe uh, cost, you know, cost analysis um, spreadsheets. Uh, there's a lot of free applications online that you can get for costing out your recipes. I'm old school. 
given my age and how long I've been doing this. So I've been on Excel for since I was a bar manager. Um, so this is my sheet. Um, if you guys, anyone needs help with this, um, I am actually coaching through Mobile Bet Pros now. We just got my page set up with Sarah, super excited. So if you guys need help on this or need to know what these formulas are, um, we can set something up to coach. But you can see here, this is my Tipsy Jalapeno. This is my most, uh, my best selling cocktail mix. Um, it's actually been on the back of like uh, liquor brand boxes and in national news. It's, it's, I, I created it very early on in my career. It's very simple. It's just lime, agave, rosemary, jalapeno, great with mezcal. Um, I actually got hired to be the West Coast brand master for Pisco Portone. They paid me six figures to go see 25 bars a week up and down the West Coast, actually all over the world. I went to Peru twice just from this one recipe. So <laughs> literally, that, this is one of the reasons that they hired me, that and my event experience. But um uh, you can see here that I've got a healthy margin. So I, I sell all my, my mixers. I, we batch and bottle everything for speed and, and uh, quality purposes at events. So I use uh, 750 milliliter bottles. My batches all go in there without the alcohol. And um, that's how we do our service. Two pours, one liquor, one mixer, a garnish and go. And um, so at, at events, guys, I don't recommend muddling. We're not going to talk about ops too much during this call, but like make sure that you're setting yourself up to succeed at events. And then also understanding that right now, if you're the solo bartender at your events, um, you want to be able to not be, right? You want to be able to hire people down the road. And the best way to do that uh, and maintain the quality and consistency is to have a, some type of batching program in place. Um, I've been batching for 11 years before I think it was even a thing. So again, we can, if you guys, anybody needs help with that, um, we can discuss like how my kitchen set up and all of that fun stuff. The cost your recipes, make sure that your best selling items have the healthiest profit margins. So when you're looking at, at what those items are and you see that it's not too healthy, that's some of the first like cost saving things that you need to work on is go in and see how can I save money? Can I find agave nectar cheaper? Can I find my limes cheaper? Um, uh, and make sure that the margins on your top selling items are, are healthy. At least this is, uh, this I included labor. So without labor, this is almost a 70% margin with the labor it's 60%, but to me, anything over 50 is pretty good. I'm making about 11 bucks a bottle that I sell on average, uh, on an average event, I'm selling probably 50, 60 bottles at least. So, um, it's a good margin for my business as our mixers. Um, all right. So this is a big one. I've, I've heard from multiple bar caterers um, that they don't upcharge their staffing, and that's just completely nuts to me. So I realize when a lot of people get started, you start using uh, independent contractors, and that's fine, but you do quickly, as quickly as you can afford to switch over to employees you want to. I learned this lesson the hard way, so this is where I'm going to save you guys um, the mistake. And Sarah and I did a podcast on it uh, as well, if you guys want to go back and check that out. But I got audited by the EDD. The EDD, the Employment Development Department, they're the people that pay out unemployment and all that fun stuff, but they're also the people that audit businesses who are doing it wrong, and, and they're legit going after event businesses right now. They're looking for businesses. So when I got audited, I was about five or six years into Black Lab. I got fined for every single employee that they deemed should have been an employee and not an independent contractor, and it's at their discretion um, some of the things you can go with your independent contractors, make sure they have websites for bartending or for the services that they're providing. Make sure that they have their own business cards. That's a way that you can say, hey, they're a company. And then if you ever get audited, say they're not under my direction. They, they come, they do their own thing because if they're under your direction, they're considered an employee. Anyway, long story short, it was a $20,000 fine. Um, luckily, I was big enough and had grown enough that we were able to manage that and set up um, some payments and, and whatnot, but not fun, not fun. I would much rather have that $20,000 in my pocket. So as soon as you can, if you don't have employees, switch over to, to from independent contractors to employees. Um, there's tons of apps for payroll and staffing. I personally, I do like ADP. They're the big dogs, but um, they're actually not too much more expensive than some of the smaller apps, but they have a lot more resources and including their HR um, um, 
program that they have. So all my, my employee handbooks and all of those things are constantly up to date. And I, I know for sure that we're good by California laws, which is a horrible state to work in, very difficult. But um, they handle all of that. And for me, that peace of mind, I think it's an extra 40, 40 30, 40 bucks a month, um, maybe 50. But to have that peace of mind is great. They also don't charge extra because um, I have like 60 people on my payroll um, and they don't charge extra if I don't run payrolls on them, which a lot of customers charge you per person. So I can have as many people on my payroll and I'm only paying for the people that I'm running a payroll for during that pay period. Because right, you know, during a slow week, I may only have 10 or 15 bartenders I'm paying and on a busy week, maybe I'm paying like 40 um, and I'm only paying for what, you know, is, is for who, who's gone out there and worked. So when you're setting up, um, so your staffing price, and I'm probably gonna spend a little more time on this because it's so important. You gotta understand the real cost of employees. So that's the hourly rate. And then you also have payroll processing, payroll tax, workers' compensation, benefits, all of that stuff. So the formula for that is just take the hourly rate and multiply it by 15%, which you can see we've done here. Well, I did 115% just so I could get the whole total um, of $23 an hour. So if I'm paying an employee $20 an hour, um, they're really costing me $23 an hour at at least a 50% margin to that. I add 60%. Um, um, I'm in Los Angeles, so, you know, know your market. Don't outprice yourself of, around everyone else, but um, make sure you have a healthy enough margin because you need to make money off this. And for the people who go, oh, I'm just hiring my friends and I just want to, you know, make them a good amount of money and pay them the whole thing. You can't do that. That That's costing your, your business money. It's costing your business the ability to grow. Um, your staffing should be a revenue stream. And plus, you know, you go to a lot of effort to get these people these jobs and you have to send them the details and you have to coordinate. So it needs to be a profitable item of at least 50%. Um, and, you know, when you go out and I, I just will send staff to events because if I spend, you know, 10 staff, bartenders and servers and stuff to an event, I'm making, well, on this margin, $115 an hour. So on an eight hour event, that's almost a grand in my pocket if I have 10 employees out and, and profit. So that's a great revenue stream to have um, for your business and it's easy to execute and easy to get out. So make sure your staffing is in line, make sure you're making money off of it and that it's profitable. All right, so now we're going to jump into the fun stuff. I'm going to show you exactly how I book clients. So I'm going to come off of this document. Again, you guys can go to our website and download this. Uh, Lee and Sarah will share links um, in the comments and on post emails. Um, so you can see that the eight steps that I do. But we're going to go right in to my site. So this is Black Lab Events website. So when I first started, I was Black Lab Mixology. Uh, and then when I partnered with my catering partner, we switched to Black Lab Events, and I started selling his food. So one thing you'll notice about my site is I drive people to packages every chance I get, more than I tell them how great I am, um, which a lot of websites is just telling people, oh, I'm so great that they can't get proposals or they can't see pricing. Um, I drive people to pricing. My website's designed well, so I know that they'll think I'm great. So you scroll into my site, let's get started driving them to a package. You keep going down. I've got it for my old school people that want a PDF download my lookbook, which drives people to my packages. Um, and then I'll tell them a little bit about how great I am. Got my little celebrity vid um, for Jesus' birthday we did. And then what? Back to sales. Drive them to an event package. Drive them to a staffing package. Drive them to a bar package. And then another pep rant of how great I am. Here's all my great clients. But honestly, you know, your customers want to see pricing. They want to see what it's going to cost. They want to see what they're going to get. Um, yes, they want to know that you're great, but you have plenty of opportunities to pepper that in. And then, again, drive them to my packages. So when you're setting up your website, set it up to be sales forward. Um, and then you'll still have your about tabs and all of that fun stuff that shows how great you are. Um, all right, I'm super excited for this, guys, because I'm actually redoing my website again um, because we've launched new features for eSense, my booking software, and you guys are actually going to be the first person to see this. Sarah hasn't even seen this yet, or I don't think Lee's even seen it. I was oh. up late last night <laughs> getting my new marketplace ready. So when people come to my website, they come to my marketplace here. I'm going to uh, 
this is my new marketplace. So again, like I said, it's not plugged into my site yet, but it will be by tomorrow. They're going to put in their event time. Let's say we're going to do a little afternoon four to what? 10. That's about a normal event. We'll say it's for a hundred people. We'll look it out for this. Well, not that we can have a hundred person event in February, but soon enough we will. And then I let, people select a category here so they can see all of the packages and this helps them find I have over 70 event packages in my marketplace it's, it's too many so but I have something for everyone um, so this helps people find the right package let's look at full bar and boom so now I have all of my beautiful full bar packages these are my most popular packages I've narrowed it down for eight for my customers to find the right one um, let's look at my standard full bar. This is probably my best seller here. So you'll see what I do. I get pricing to my customers immediately. They don't have to call me. They don't have to email me. They don't have to fill out a form minus those few questions in the beginning. And I drive them right to my site and pardon if this loads a little slow, we'll skip the tour because I'm going to show it. Um, when I screen share, it slows things down a bit. So this is my standard full bar cocktail package. Uh, you have my package description, give the details to the guests, I give little notes about how to book and what is, this is all about. And then they can scroll down and see everything in the package is here in the cart. I've got pricing, so it's $4,680. Um, and then all of the products in the package are right here. It's beautifully laid out, easy to find. And then the other step farther, unlike some other platforms I won't mention, Honeybooks, Dubsado, <clears throat> excuse me. No, I like those as CRMs, but a sell system, I created this because none of the CRMs were actually selling products in my services the way I needed to sell them and the way I wanted to sell them, which is more like an e-commerce environment that people are used to. Um, but one thing you can do is you can even menu plan. So let's say I don't want a watermelon mojito and come over here and find another yummy cocktail from all of the cocktails that I offer. And what our system does is it allows you to program all of these things to be reactive um, to the guest count and the time frame, so that you're offering enough. Um, and I program all of this in, or, you know, uh, Sarah, like for her packages, programs it in how she wants it to be for her, um, as I do for me. We actually, our packages look completely different because I don't have a rig um, and I am mainly selling all my services, um, including rentals. So now I'm selling rentals. I don't have any of these guys. This is a rental company. I don't upcharge. I'll sell their price, but I'm going to make 15% here on my service fee, right? Plus this rental company I work with gives me a 10% kickback. So I'm making a 25% margin on rentals. I don't have to do anything but have them delivered to my event and picked up. It's great. It's awesome. So um, a great thing to include in your package um, is, is rentals if you haven't started coordinating rentals for people. And then staff. Um, I've got my lead bartenders, my bartenders, and my whole my staff here. You can add in the prep hours. So it's charging and set up from four to 10 on this. It's charging from two to 11 because two hours for setup, one hour for breakdown. Um, you can make products mandatory. So look, oh, people can't take this product out. It has to be there and all that fun stuff. And then once the customer has everything how they want it and has it all situated, and just submit proposal. They can log in if they already have an account or check out as a guest and create an account. I collect their email here. I get all of the event address and all the pertinent info and save the cart. Uh, this is all emailed to me when someone saves and I don't have to do anything but follow up. So by the point that I have um, someone save the cart, I've learned A, exactly what they want, B, that they can afford me because my, my position in, in LA with Black Lab is I'm the, I'm the top tier. Um, I don't want to deal with small events. Um, I, I, I like kind of dealing in the luxury market. And so I'm higher priced than everyone, but I, I um, validate that with 11 years of business, with my name, with all the work that I've done over the years to become an authority in the industry. And I get some of the best clients and some of the biggest events in LA because of that. And again, high-end luxury people, they don't want to pay the cheapest guy. That's a turnoff to them. They want to pay the guy that's most credible and they don't mind paying more for the best. Um, and so that's how I position myself. Um, but I don't talk to a customer until they've saved a cart um, um, for most of the time. If referrals come in via emails, then I have templates that I use 
um, to drive people to the packages. But I don't create proposals for clients. That's a huge waste of time. Uh, I spent a ton of money developing eCinch originally just for me. Um, a lot of money because of how much time it wasted me. And the year I deployed it, that's the year I grew Black Lab 68%. And, you know, some of you guys can do 100 or 200% growth if you're smaller businesses. But my growth was from doing about 300000 a year to about a half a million a year. So once you get to bigger revenues, it's harder to make those bigger jumps um, in terms of percentages uh, just because you're dealing with a lot more money. So we're going to fly through the rest of this pretty quick, quick, um, just because we're running out of time and I want to have some time for questions and I'll stay on a little longer if you guys want, but uh, leveling up. So you just guys, as you're growing your business, write it down, write down your systems, write down how to do things, especially if you're a solo entrepreneur right now, you, you eventually do want to hire people to do all of the jobs where you're just focused on growing your business and maybe sales like I am for, for Black Lab. Um, but you can't train people on how to do things if you don't have it written down, if you don't have a process on paper that you can share and that they can follow. Um, templates, 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 never send the same email twice. That's a big thing up front. You want to invest time in creating email responses and different template responses for your frequently asked questions. Um, a big one, again, create multiple revenue streams. So, once I kind of hit a point of doing a couple hundred, 200 to 250 events a year, that kind of maxed me out, but I still want to grow my revenue, right? So that's kind of when I started partnering, partnering with caterers. Uh, I started offering other services outside of just bar. So instead of expanding my business and trying to find more customers, my mindset then turned to how can I sell more to the customers that I had? And that was a big part of my growth uh, and from 2018 to 2019 is, is selling more to the customer base that I had built. Um, and at some point in your business, when you feel stuck, that's something that then you should look at um, is how can I sell them more? Because they already trust you um, and you already have them in your pocket. And then uh, the last thing is tracking your success. And I know a lot of our businesses can be kind of bad about this, but you've got to do monthly P and L's, not quarterly, not yearly, but monthly because you don't know the health of your business unless you know how much money you're making. So get QuickBooks online or some new, accounting software. New business owner new, me feels attacked. That was totally me my first year. I was like, let me just uh, yeah. close my books for year one at the end of year one. <laughs> I don't think I knew what a PL was for the, like the first three years of Black Lab. <laughs> so someone taught me fortunately enough. And, um, and so, guys, this is my actual P&L from the year that I'm talking about. Obviously, we don't mention 2020. It is the unmentionable year. So we'll talk about 2019. Um, since I, I, my business in L.A., I couldn't do events all last year. So we only did like 80000 in revenue in January and half of February and then really nothing after that. So, um, But 2019 was healthy. So you can see I did uh, 436000 in revenue. My cost of goods sold were 153,000. So that's, a, I think, roughly a 65% margin um, with having a gross profit of 283,000. And so this is just top line. So I'm happy with that. I know my cost of goods are good, um, but maybe I wanna make more than my net income. So this is profits to, 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 to the owners is 102,000. We spent 180,000 on expenses and. Obviously, I didn't have enough room to show you guys the line item, but when you don't like your numbers, the first thing you're going to look at is cost of goods sold, because that is the most consistent things that are going to be attached to every event and identify where you can cut cost there. If your cost of goods sold, goods sold are good, then you want to look at your other expenses, and that's important as you're growing. So once you grow out of maybe your home kitchen to a shared kitchen space um, that you're paying rent on monthly or hourly or whatever, you need to track all of those expenses and you're then going to have to have a certain amount of money that you have to make every single month to float your operations. Um, and, uh, and, and when things look wonky, you got to break them down and say, all right, well, where are we paying more money? What can I cut? And, and at the beginning of last year, that's exactly what I did for my risk mitigation, risk assessment and mitigation. Once the pandemic hit, I said, what can I cut? I mean, I cut everything. Everything is what we cut, except for our shared space um, 
because we got into a long lease with my partner on that, but we ended up getting to cut our rent down to like pretty much nothing towards the end of the year. We worked out a deal with them. Um, but yeah, you don't know if you're making money unless you know you're making money. So get your P&Ls, get your accounting software set up, look at your P&Ls, if not monthly, at the very least quarterly. And this is the only way you're going to be able to know how you can grow your business. And I'll give you one quick example on this. We were looking at getting a liquor license and, and, and doing the lottery for the license in LA and County um, um, in 2019 this year. And uh, the way I went to my partner, because I want to do this, is I broke down our numbers. I showed him exactly how much liquor we were selling through the retailer. I showed him the profits that we could make if we sell it ourselves. I broke down the ex expected expenses for us to buy an inventory and manage the booze down to labor. And I had a spreadsheet to present the numbers to show him exactly how much profits this would yield to us, because that's what it's all about, is making money and putting it in your pocket. Uh, and I couldn't have done that had I not had my P&Ls to, to kind of put that report together. So, all right, guys, we're wrapping up here. Last but not least, just invest in yourself for your future growth. Um, plan for your success. Get a coach. You'll, there's not a successful person in the world you'll meet that doesn't have a business coach. I'm just actually signing up with a new coach for SaaS technology companies. Um, and... Uh, you know, I know Sarah has a coach. Lee has, we all have coaches, guys. That's, it helps keep you accountable. I know Sarah's probably preached it up a lot to you guys, so I won't lay it on too thick, but get a coach. Um, another great way to grow your business is through partnerships. This is important um, for solo entrepreneurs. It can be hard to do it all by yourself. So um, getting a business partner, I've always had a business partner. I don't like doing it by myself. It's too much. Um, um, I've had in Black Lab, my partner that I started with, she actually got bought out. She's an actress and got a television show and all this fun stuff. So she got bought out by my catering partner, um, which was great for me because my catering partner ended up bringing in a lot of revenue for us. Every, every person that came through his door now is um, coming through us. And he also helped get us in a lot of great venues that he was in in Malibu where we're the preferred vendors at. Um, that's another partnership thing. You can have affiliate partnerships. So not like a partner in your business, but someone that you work with and pay commissions to, or they pay commissions to you. Venues, get partnerships, become preferred vendors, a preferred vendor at all of the best venues that you can. Even if you have to go do a tasting for free, pay money out of pocket to get that done, do it. And then schmooze them, people who book there. Send them gifts every so often. Um, you know, make sure that they're recommending you to their clients because that's easy, easy money on the table right there. You've got to take. Um, create a business roadmap uh, is a good thing. Guys, don't, I don't think you need a business plan. Um, honestly, unless you're getting money from like trying to raise money, friends and family may, may help you, but really most service businesses, institutional investors won't really consider investing in. Um, they're just not scalable. But uh, a business roadmap is great to have. It's an outline. It's something that you can go in and change at any time, and it's easy. It doesn't have to be formal. It's only for you, for your partners, for your internal team. Um, and when building that roadmap, start with where you want your business to end. So if you say, hey, I want my business to be like Black Lab, well, look at my end result. Look at the technology I have on my website. Look at my systems. Look at how I have a team that operates. Start there and then work your way backwards and say, how do I get to that point? So, you know, I need to do this and then I need to do this and this and work your way back till you get to the point um, of where you are and to where you want to be. And last but not least, guys, just love what you do. If not, find something else. We don't live long enough <laughs> to not do something that we love. Obviously, we're super lucky and blessed to be in the party business. But um, love what you do and don't let your business own you. And if you, you know, follow this advice, get systems set up. It doesn't have to. I, I hardly work on my business like Black Lab because I'm so dedicated to my, my software but my business still makes me a ton of money. I, I booked three events this week and it probably took 15 minutes of my time and uh, it was around 14,000 in revenue this week and 15, 15, 20, even 30, maybe, maybe 30 minutes of my time, but not a lot. So you can get there, just put in the work now and, um, and you'll get there. And guys, download these slides. On the last page of these slides, I give all my recommendations and Lee's recommendations. He helped with this, uh, uh, just resources to help you grow your business. And um, all right, questions. I, I am two minutes left. 
<laughs> but I'll stay on a little bit longer if you guys, uh, let's do some Q&A if you guys have Yeah, no, you right. totally, I'm glad you offered. I already, re I had something right at like 2.15 and I already sent them an email. I'm like, ah, not going to be able to do this um, because I think we've got, we've already got a bunch of questions piling up. And so I want to um, give sufficient time here. Um, okay, Joel, I can't see your face. So if you'll do me a favor and fix that so that I can see your face. Okay, let me stop screen sharing. Yeah, stop screen sharing. Return your face to the screen so we can see, can you see the man now? of the hour. The man, no. oh, start video. Now? Now I can see you. Fantastic. Um, oh my gosh, so much amazing information there. I just want to, on behalf of everyone, thank you for your time. That was amazing. We have a bunch of really, really great questions. Um, the first thing that I will say is uh, a couple things. One, there have been some questions about coaching in the uh, because obviously you 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 pitch that. Uh, Joel is available for hourly coaching. You can go. Um, we'll share the link with you um, if you want to. And I hate this term. If you know me, you know I hate this term, but I'm using it anyways. If you want to pick Joel's brain, you are welcome to book him. Um, he is available by the hour. Um, and I'm, uh, I will share that link with you. I also offer coaching. I do, so I do one hour strategy sessions, but more so I do ongoing arrangements. So, um, you know, like we'll, we'll set a goal and we'll work um, with you over time to, to get you there. Um, the other thing is that, um, Joel has done what he has accomplished in 10 years. What he has shared with you enables you to get there a lot faster, especially if you, you know, are strategic about how you do it. Um, but this won't be overnight. All right. So don't, uh, don't just go expecting a 60% or 200% increase over the next uh, couple months. Obviously there's going to be a lot of foundational work that you need to do. So we're not promising you 60% results. You may get more. Um, which is all the one thing good. right now is with, with, with COVID I'll jump in real quick is now's the time. Cause honestly, we're not, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I'm, I'm not really booking things until like July and August. So you have a couple months to just work, 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 work while we're not, while we're not booking and look at making that growth starting next year. Cause 2022, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to do a million dollars in revenue and I already have a plan in place to do it. So um, just for Black Lab, not for Essence, so that's going to be a whole nother bunch of money someday for us, but <laughs> put the work in now. Yes. And so the other question that we're going to get is, can we hear, can we see more about eCinch? And yes, you freaking should, because this is an awesome piece of software. It keeps getting more and more awesome. We're not going to do that today. We don't have the time, but they have actually organized a webinar on, it's a demo um, on Thursday, it's a group demo. So anybody who's interested in seeing kind of the back end, how do you set it up? What is the, the, the front end options? Um, Lee and Joel have scheduled a webinar or demo for Thursday. Um, you can sign up for that. I'm going to follow up with all attendees with all of this in email. You don't have to worry about it. I'm going to tell you where to get the slides in the email, how to book Joel for an hour for, in the email. Um, I'm going to include their Facebook group in the email, the demo information in the email. So you guys will get all of this. Um, the other thing that you're going to get is Joel's going to share with you because I'm such a raving fan um, and I truly, truly, truly believe in this software, which is why you see Joel's face so much. Oh, did I mention he's also presenting on how to land corporate clients in the mobile bar boot camp that's happening starting on Sunday. So if you haven't bought your tickets yet for, for that, please do. Um, he's going to be, uh, you're going to see his face a lot around here, obviously, because he has a ton of information and this isn't the Sarah show. This is how do we make mobile bars successful? And Joel is a very key component of that. Um, he's agreed to let mobile bev pros that uh members or the not even the members but people who are here on this workshop early access to this thing that he shared with us today the marketplace and all of those good things um for founding rates so joel will you share with everybody what that means yeah and we'll put out the promo code for that um in, a, in an email and, and on the group demo but basically we're launching a founder's rate it's going to be a yearly special, 500 bucks for the year, which breaks it down to like just over 40 bucks a month. Uh, and this is for lifetime. So our plan with eSense right now is we only have one platform, but like pretty much all other e-commerce platforms, eventually as we build out more features, we're going to have different 
levels of the platform. And with the founder special, what that guarantees is that you always have first access to new features and you always have the best version of the platform, which um, our premium platform, just if we position it like Spotify or not Spotify, Shopify, um, I think there's is like 200 and something a month. So you're talking about like savings of thousands once we get, you know, a premium platform like that out down the road and, you know, within a year. So it is going to be a great savings. Um, and you're going to be investing in a company that, um, that wants to, you know, invest in you. So literally everything that we're making right now for eSense goes back in developing more tools that are useful for you. Um, we want to hear you if, you. if you like being an early adopter in tech and want to have a voice in where the kind of strategy of the development goes, that's what we're looking for um, is feedback on how we can make it better. I can't, you know, all of our businesses are different and I, I kind of built this out for my business first. And then Sarah came on as a super early adopter um, and we started working with her on features that she would like price per person per hour. I think that got launched today, Sarah. So see, she's got her own functionality in our software. Um, so yeah, the founders, the founders special, um, is you're not going to get a better deal on, on it than that. So, um, well, awesome. in the group demo, uh, on Thursday, or if you're not free Thursday, you can go to e-sense.com and just sign up for a demo whenever you have time. And, um, the first, how many did we say? 250? Two, yeah. You told me 250 and there's, there's yeah, already, the um, the sign up will have access to that special. Yeah. And, and to be clear, this isn't necessarily a sales web uh, workshop. It's just the, um, I find a ton of value in this piece of software. They have offered our members a special rate. Um, if you want to see more, I see Davina's asking what else other than marketplace, the marketplace isn't even the, the thing that's the newest thing the, the, it, you know, I've been using it for months now, even without the marketplace. So sign up for the demo for sure, because he, um, yeah. Joel offers a free two week trial. So you can kind of get in there, play around, see how you like it. Joel likes to, to, to make it super automated. So like, you know, you don't even have to talk to Joel. I like to kind of hide mine behind a wall. So there's a little bit more intimacy there. I get a little bit more information, maybe a, a phone call. You can set it up however you'd like within your own system, which is really, really helpful. Um, we do have a couple of questions here that I said that I would answer live. So the first Let's one is, um, there's a two from uh, China Moon. Um, suggestions for those who do not hold a liquor license and supply everything but the booze. And so I'm actually going to take my or weigh in on this because um, one of the things that actually brought me to this software originally is that it is a third party. It doesn't take payment. So if you were to work with a local retailer with, you don't have a liquor license, you want to work or partner with a local retailer, you can get uh, pricing, inventory, popular things from your retailer, plug it into your eCinch portal. And then when people choose it, they, you don't have to, they don't have to pay you because eCinch isn't taking any money there. So you can just say, okay, this is their order and you can process that through your retailer. So they're, they're still charged twice, but you, it kind of feels very seamless to them, right? Does that make sense? So they can order your services at the same time as they order alcohol. You can actually use your CRM or your invoicing software to, to bill them for the services. And then you work with your partner retailer to bill them for the alcohol. So they pay two invoices, which they're going to do any anyways, without a liquor license, but you've just made their life so much more simple because it's not a separate thing from your process, right? They're, be they're being charged two separate invoices, but the process of actually doing it is very seamless on the front end. And so that's one of the things I really liked about this software is that you can take someone's order without also charging them, which in Dubsado and HoneyBook and pretty much any other invoicing uh, option out there, it's going to take that money right away. And we all know that's a violation of liquor laws. With this, it doesn't do that. So you you don't need a liquor license in order to um, order. I'm not going to say sell because you're not taking the cash for them to order what they want to order alcohol wise. If that makes sense. Yeah, and that's exactly how I do it. So I, I mentioned that we were talking about getting a liquor license. We ended up not going forward with it because we had just moved into a new bigger kitchen and expanded. So we decided to wait a year. Then COVID hit, so we still didn't do it. But I work with a third party retailer. I've been working with him for a decade. Um, I have a deal with him that I get a 10% kickback on the back end. Um, again, I, 
legalities, you've got to check with your state. I only know it's legal for California. Um, I know a little bit about Texas liquor laws, but really California is my area of expertise. I think for the most part, like Sarah said, if you don't have the license, as long as the sell's not going through you, meaning you're not taking the cash and funneling it, then you're fine. And yes, with eCinch, that's why it says submit proposal, not pay now. Another reason is because I want to be able to decide if this is an event I want to do or not. I want, you know, I turn down events all the time. Um, and that's why it's good to have guys when it comes to networking and partners, other bar caterers in your area. Um, uh, Darcy is a great friend and she's on East Inch and part of Mobile Bev Pros um, and, and, and uh, Sarah's her Darcy's coach. But she, um, um, shoot, where was I going with this? Um, you guys refer each oh, other business. Yeah, exactly. We refer each other business um, and that's great. Um, so, but with the liquor laws, yeah, we don't collect money. So essentially you're just referring. And if you guys go in, you know, feel free to go to my website and check out my packages and stuff. Um, but you'll see, I even mentioned in all of my packages that the alcohol is provided by John and Pete's Fine Wine and Spirits. That's my partner. Um, and if you start selling enough booze for these people, uh, may, you know, I, I couldn't imagine them not offering kickbacks. So I, I literally make 25% it's hard to say profit, but I, you know, I make a service fee for recommending the alcohol and taking care of all the, um, uh, getting it back and forth. And then I make a kickback from that retailer. Um, and I don't, I, you know, I don't have to do anything, but put the orders in and even that the software does So on the back end, we have a BEO feature that I can sort by vendor and just say here, you know, Ronnie, um, here's the order. He punches it in. Um, we're also looking at hooking up like Google credit card authenticated. Uh, I can't say that word, but Google credit card on it, which actually doesn't run the card. It'll just uh, prove that it's a valid card. And then um, this is what I'm working on with my liquor retailer right now. So that when the, my customers run the card, he actually has the card. He can go to a um, password protected login, get the card number and punch it in manually on his system. He doesn't like to do online payments. He likes to take them all manually. Um, and with that, once we get that launched um, on my system, this is something I'm just building out custom for my my. To be clear, uh, this is not available platform. currently. It's not yet, but if you guys are interested, anytime I build <laughs> something out for myself, I'll beta test it first, and then if other people want it, I will release it to them for sure. I have a plugin for PayPal on my system. Um, I have a plugin for Zoho as well, which is the. Um, CRM I was looking at using. And by the way, guys, those numbers you saw in 2019, uh, almost half a million dollars in revenue. I, I hate to say it, but I didn't have a CRM. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. So system. I used PayPal I, and I had my own little CRM system built. But I, I want to talk about that for a second because we are getting a lot CRM. of questions about this as to how eCinch kind of fits in with CRMs. Um, or is it a replacement for a CRM? It is not, and nor does it tend to be, right? Like we're, the, the, the eSinch is not intending to be a full functional CRM, but uh, what it does do is it enables you to package and bundle um, and create, you know, different offerings in a way that no other software does. And again, I'm not trying to be super salesy here, but one of the reasons I'm really passionate about this uh, software is because I don't like the fact that HoneyBook required me to change the way that I was um, pricing my services in order to fit in their little tiny you know, options. It's either per person, it's either per item, right? Like not everything fits in the same. So um, with, with eSinch in the same package, I can price things per hour. I can price things per person and I can price things per item. So, and they scale up and down. So a single bag of ice, I want two pounds per person, right? So if I say there's a hundred people, the system will automatically calculate how many bags of ice that person needs to put in their package. That's also really helpful for me on a, on a because I can just create that as a, as a purchase for that event. You know, they've purchased six bags of ice. I need to purchase six bags of ice, right? And so that doesn't invoice, the eCinch doesn't invoice. So you can use eCinch with whatever it is you're currently using. I use Dubsado, you guys know this. I use eCinch with Dubsado. You can use it with HoneyBook, should you choose. You could use it with PayPal, which is what Joel used, right? You can use PayPal it with and, and Pipeline, calendar. Pipe Drive, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. So whatever this isn't a CRM. Want. 
but it is it is kind of a perfect solution for bundling, creating a marketplace, and and getting people the the numbers that they need um, in order to make good decisions as to whether or not you're the the service that they that they want. Exactly. So, in 2019, like I said, I didn't have a CRM, but I kind of had manufactured my own. So, do my Squarespace website. I did all my marketing through them. So, all my newsletters, my email lists went there. Um, then I use my Outlook calendar to manage just the what events we have when and all of the event details I would put into my calendar with a link. So when they when you push submit proposal on eSense system, it does take them to a nice line item um, kind of not invoice but proposal with pictures of everything and it's it looks really nice. Um, so I'll use that link. And then I'll use the BEO functions on the back and put that all in my calendar. And that's what I did before COVID hit. I was setting up Zoho, which is um, it's not meant for creative professionals like Dubsado and, and HoneyBook as a CRM. It's it's a little bit more uh, industrial and kind of um, something that could scale with my business. But I created a plugin for that. Um, we're working with Sarah on a plugin for Dubsado so that when you want to transfer the client from eSearch into Dubsado. It'll just be one push of a button, or maybe even at the point where the person saves the um, first proposal, the system will automatically trigger and, and put them into Dubsado. So, um, yeah, we're, we're looking at that. The Zoho integration is done um, because Drinks On Me Catering out of Chicago, one of our clients, um, he got that, we got that set up for him. But we're looking at creating plugins for all the most popular CRMs for you guys um, down the road. Yes, absolutely. So another question that we've been getting, um, and this is this is actually really exciting because this is kind of a game changer. We've I've, I've talked a bunch about strategic partnerships in the past, and and that can sometimes look um, challenging, right? And so instead of and here's just a simple example. So instead of someone going out and buying a ton of glassware, partner with a rental company that already has glassware, right? And makes you know and and in most cases it's illegal for i mean we've got some people from australia and other places and they have different health regulations and and but in most cases in the united states the health department would have a literal cow which i would adopt because it's my favorite animal um if you were using glassware and just like washing it in home at your dishwasher or by hand right like they they require a commercial dishwasher to wash those things then you have to store them in a way where you're not going to get all sorts of critters and dust and crap inside right so you're not set up for that typically as a standard mobile bar. If you partner with a rental company that already has all of that stuff, they'd likely already have that stuff even on their website that you could just like copy and paste all of the little glasswares that they have. In almost every case, they are already set up to create 10% commission rates to event planners that are already utilizing and recommending their stuff. You have to ask, usually I found that if I use your inventory, if I sell your inventory, um, do you guys have a commission rate? Almost every time they're like, yes, it's 10%. Perfect. So when you set up that item in eCinch, you assign it to the vendor that actually owns it. And then on the back end, whenever that event books, you get your 10% and you just send them the order and you kind of facilitate that. So Wendy, you have a question here. Does adding catering and rentals add more hours of work to do? Not really, because all you have to do once they book is send the information to the actual person who's facilitating the order. You have basically just curated that information for them. And then whatever your arrangement is, that ha that happens separately from what, what's on eCinch, right? Like you're not ordering from the rental company through eCinch, but you could have an arrangement where you're just downloading that PDF and sending it over. So there's a little bit, but that's where, that's where the service charge comes in, okay? So I had another yeah, question here about the started. service charge. I have been, I've been telling people, and there's a, there's a difference, right? So I like to build gratuity into my pricing because if all you're doing is renting bartenders, then it's, a, it's like a service charge. And so how are you charging tips on top of that unless it's a tip tip, right? Where someone's giving it to you at the bar, right? There's a difference to me where I'm facilitating things they would otherwise have to do on their own. So if I'm facilitating your catering, if I'm facilitating your rentals, if I'm facilitating any of these strategic partnerships that I have, that's 
that there's effort involved in that, right? And so that deserves a service fee. And that can be, you know, whatever percentage you think is fair. I think industry standard for, Lee, you, you and I had this conversation before. It was like 20%, 25% or something. Mine used to be 20%, but then I started charging tax separate. And so I dropped it to 15% because the tax was 9.5%, which actually still puts my packages 3% more than they used to be uh, when I was just doing 20% and no tax. So 15 to 20% is the standard that I've seen. A lot of people, I think a lot of bar companies go 20. And I, I want you guys to be very clear and understand this. My service fee is not a tip for anyone. That is profit for me coordinating. That's profit to the business. My staff is all paid very well. So my, my barbacks make uh, 20 to 25 an hour. My bartenders make 25 to 30. Even my head bartenders make upwards of 35 an hour. No, I mean, if they get tips, it's cash tips at the event or if the client after the event wants to give, you know, a, a, an extra, you know, um, cash or check um, tip, that's fine. And I'll divvy that out to the staff. But the service fee is not a tip. No, 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 right. no. And yeah. I'll say it again. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> go, and you're, well, I mean, if you give all your money away to your employees, you can't grow your business and then you can't hire more employees. So you're not doing a service to people um, by, by giving everything away. You're doing a service to people by being responsible with your profits and with your money and growing your business so that you can employ more people. And especially because I think a lot of us pay um, in the U S I know Australia is probably more um, just because it's more expensive out there, but in the U S you know, our minimum wage is now $15 an hour. And I don't pay anyone less than 20. Uh, and you're talking for a barback position. That's a very entry-level position. And a barback's probably not even going to average $20 an hour at a good bar making a tip out. You know, so um, I, I recommend paying the staff a good hourly rate. Don't worry about putting in gratuity for the staff. They'll get cash at the bar and at the events and stuff here and there. And if they don't, and sometimes for my corporate clients, that my staff doesn't make any tips, but they're, again, you're making well. 25 to 30 dollars an hour so don't yeah. complain find and, another job where you can do that for sure yeah. and I've, I've never had an issue my staff thinks that they're paid well everyone's happy i've never you know had an issue with um you know staff thinking that we're we're cheap or cheating them out i, I do have overtime rates um you can program overtime rates in the essence um and so th they make good money i've had I've had, so Sunny, my lead bartender, she's been with me 10 years. Alex, um, my lead barback, has been with me almost 11, almost the entirety of my company. I have tons of bartenders. Like I said, I have about 50 on my payroll um, of them. At least 10 of them have been with me for five years or more. So I feel like I'm a pretty good boss um, and run a pretty good operation because you know how much turnover you can have in our, in our space in terms of just event staff. Um, right. Yeah. Cool. One clarification. Oh yeah, we've got a couple yeah. more. Um, one other thing, Wendy actually asked, um, what are some suggestions you have for approaching other vendors, such as catering liquor stores, to partner and earn commissions from selling their items, and how are you able to get commission from liquor sales? So to clarify, you're not ever, ever getting a commission off liquor sales. You are, however, getting a fee for facilitating the alcohol order. Well, That's I do very... get a commission on the, on the back end, but guys, that may not be legal, so I'm not going to tell you guys to do that. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm being honest. My guy. Um, yeah. Okay. He, he gets... Nobody Sorry, heard that. Sorry. Everyone needs to erase their memory. Nobody heard that. <laughs> to clarify... You are never getting commission off the sale of alcohol. You are getting a service fee for assembling and facilitating the alcohol order. Thanks very much for that, Joel. Um, yeah. However, if you're looking to partner with other people, I've been doing this myself. It's super easy. I call the rental company. I'm like, hey, I'm a mobile bar company. I get my clients that really want to use glassware. Um, obviously, I don't have any of my own, but I would love to add your inventory to my um, booking software. Here it is. And people People, like every single time they're like, oh my gosh, absolutely. Would you need my list? Do you need any pictures? Like, do you need like whatever, 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 whatever? What do you need? Right. Because it's super easy to use. And they're like, oh yeah, that would be awesome. And we're, you know, whatever. Um, uh, catering is very much the same way. I will say that when you reach out to caterers, you want to kind of set the expectation because a lot of times these caterers, they don't have something like this. So they're, they've, 
squeezed themselves into some other pricing platform. So that might be a little bit harder for you to be like, hey, let's put your entire menu on my uh, my thing, right? They might have like, well, it's kind of, I have to sell it because it, you know, it's hard for me to like, whatever, whatever. So build that relationship and then just say like, hey, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z. Are you interested in kind of working with me to find or figure out how to cater your menu to, you know, the way that I sell my bar services or whatever. It's a, it's a relationship. It's a conversation. It's, in the case of catering, it's not usually a plug and play like it is with rentals. Yeah. Like they're already selling that stuff per item per hour, that stuff um, as it is. Yeah, I had to work with my catering partners and, and now my, my legit partner. And, and we still just have um, the two types of events I sell most to my corporate clients because um, a lot of my private clients um, come through him. So I got out of the wedding game after like a three or four years of being in the black lab and realizing how frustrating brides could be to work with. I got back into the wedding game once I got the software and I didn't have to deal with the brides as much one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but um, when you're working at events, that's a great time to go introduce yourself to the caterers that's working. Every event, you should be introducing yourself to all the other vendors. You'll get more business from other vendors than, than anywhere else. So when you're working with caterers, go introduce yourself, bring them a cocktail. Most caterers are drunks and love to drink. So <laughs> bring them a cocktail um, and introduce yourself and start to build the relationship. And I just simply say, hey, you know, uh, I have a lot of clients that request food like yours, um, a lot of trade pass kind of events. Uh, how would you feel about me adding some of your, your food services to my packages to sell to my customers? I, I've never had anyone tell me, no, you can't sell my services for me. Um, they'll say, well, how much do you want for me? Well, if we could set up a commission, that'd be great. Like five or 10% is fine, but I'm also going to charge a service fee for coordinating. Oh, do I have to discount my prices? Not if you don't want to. I mean, it could help if, if to make up for the extra 15% I'm adding if, if you do want to give us a special rate. But if not, you know, I deal with high end clientele and they don't mind paying a little bit more just to have it all coordinated through me. This is something we'll talk about with corporate clients on the SWIG thing. Um, um, because for them, they're a different customer and, and they're all about convenience. So they don't mind paying more just for one person to deal with everything, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that's another good point that I was going to make. Um, you get a commission and a service fee, right? It's basically your yeah. matchmaking. So you should be making a little something from your partner and you should be making a little something from your client. So you're not actually charging a full 25% from one person, but you are getting a little bit from each because you're basically a matchmaker. Guys, strategic partnerships like this, it's what is makes the difference between someone who's just you know working in their business and someone who's working on their business. When your business becomes bigger than just you, it becomes a facilitator for the entire industry and all of your clients and all of your vendor partners this is a game changer yeah i did 16 events in one week and 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 that week was kind of a hell week for us and i was still living in la helping with a lot of the productions and that's when i said i don't want it i don't want more events now you get you get to a point where you just need to sell more to your customers and that's going to be an easier way to grow i mean you can do 400 events a year but I wouldn't want to do <laughs> so much, you know, I'm happy at my 250 and on a busy day, I now max out my books at like three or four events, um, just depending on the size of each events. Um, but um, having those partnerships are definitely the key to be able to, to increase your revenue, but not kind of like tear your head out. And no, they're not a lot of work, especially maybe the upfront work of programming some of the stuff into your systems. But think about, here's how I think about it. I'll spend, hours on my package. I have 70, over 70 packages in my marketplace or 61. Now I still need to add more. I spent seven hours yesterday working on them, but I make a half a million dollars a year off of them. So, and, and the time I spend having dealing with customers before I had my package system was a lot more than the upfront work I put into this. So you don't look at it like, oh, this is one sell. This is a product, a package for me as a product I'm selling over and over again. Um, and, and I have like, you know, Christmas packages that I put out with, with some things that I don't even use my catering partner. So we, last year we're doing DIY s'mores with spiked cocoa bars and things like that. Well, a DIY s'mores, marshmallows, chocolate, graham crackers, and a little candle. They have s'more candles. You have to get the right burning burner ones so you don't poison people. But all things I can buy myself. I don't need to cook that in the kitchen. 
uh, I can mark up that like crazy, like I'm talking 100% margin on top of the, that service, and I don't have to pay a caterer out. So that's a little bit more upfront work, but um, it's more money for per client on the event. I did $98,000 in revenue that December in one month. Um, my newsletter that promoted those those holiday packages made me $35,000, and I was able to um, to show, you know, before you send out a newsletter and you just hope people see it and think you're great. Well, now because my newsletters drive to packages and give them actionable clicks, save package, I can see what these newsletters financially are bringing to to the table for me, um, and, and, and it was a lot. That's another thing that we haven't really talked on, and it's probably going to be covered more in the demo, so I'm not going to go too deep, but one of the other things about eCinch is that each one of these packages that you create can be experiential, and it has a link. So let's say, for example, that for the holidays, okay, let's use a common example that you guys are probably very familiar with, cocktail kits, right? So let's say you want to create a package that enables you to kit a cocktail thing. So maybe there's a couple different mixer options. Maybe there's a couple different garnish options. Maybe you put cute little mugs in it. So maybe there's like, like little glass mugs or little Moscow mule mugs or whatever it is, right? You can create these packages around these experiences and then you just link it in your link tree. That's it. You can put it in an email. You can text it to people. You can text it to your event planners and say, and this is what I do. I'm like, hey, event planner friends, you don't even need me anymore to quote your, your brides. Just go through, add the things that your brides need, and there's your quote. And so while they're waiting for all the other mobile bars to get them a quote, they've already got mine and they can edit it and they can adjust it with very little effort because it's just a link. So there's a ton of value in the, the, the functionality that eCinch is offering here. They'll show more in the demo, but I did want to just touch on that. From a marketing and sales perspective, it is pretty powerful. Um, but I do want to answer just a couple little questions that have been hanging out here. One, Ernesto, you asked, do you charge more for bartenders if they're working more than eight hours? I know you're in California. Luckily, Joel is in California too. This does have an overtime feature. Most people don't have to worry yeah. about that, but I know that you in California do. It does allow for overtime uh, functionality. Now, I'm a little friendlier with my clients on the OT. So I don't, I don't upcharge the same 50% for overtime rates. I figure at that point, I've already made a pretty healthy margin. So instead of making like 11 something an hour off the ploy for overtime, I'm usually only making like four or five an hour. Um, and then again, that's just so I don't price myself out of, of jobs. Um, even though I'm the higher price guy, you don't, there's still such thing as too high, right? And too expensive when someone looks at you and or a, a competitor of mine, this just happened. They were $500 cheaper than I was. And I told the client, well, let me see their proposal. I identified a couple of places I could, I don't lower my prices ever. I'll, I'll, I'll cut services back or kind of find creative ways within my pricing to try to get to where my clients want to be. Um, I ended up getting them down a couple hundred um, so I'm still 250 more expensive than my competitor, but they still hired me um, because of how you they have to work with. Again, in a lot of cases, I'm booking the client before you even get your damn proposal to them. Um, <laughs> you know, and that's that's it's quick quickness to the game, and especially post COVID, everyone you know is shopping online, doing everything online. If they can't come to your website and get an accurate quote, and uh, you know, you're going to lose a lot of business because people don't want to wait. You're not serving customers how they want to be served. So that's something you always need to be thinking about. Totally. Um, one other quick question, Heidi Lumia or Lumia. Sorry, I'm really bad at names. Um, you asked, do you pay a commission when you were referred? It is totally up to you if you want to pay a commission. I'm happy to offer. And Joel has even said earlier, and like he'll he'll pay up to 10% commission um, to, to have other people do the work for them of selling. I, I've had conversations with my own coaching clients where and they'll look to see what they spent on marketing and it can be upwards of 20% of sales. So if you're only spending 10%, that's you're still saving from having to like, you know, do Facebook ads or, you know, pay for free events or, you know, all of those things. Right. So don't be afraid to offer a small commission. The problem there is like, how do you track it? Right. And that's a system you got to, to build out yourself. Um, um, yeah. And for us, um, five to 10%, um, every venue that I'm, a, I'm preferred at, um, I'm, we are the choice vendor, which is above being preferred. It's a venue called Saddle Rock Ranch. It's the, the, 
best wedding venue in Malibu, the most popular wedding venue there. Um, I, I pay them 10%. I, I try to get away with five when I can, but like Sarah said, on, on my P&L, that's line item right under marketing um, because that's what it is. And, and it's, again, super effective. If a venue is going to bring you work, you happily pay them. Um, um, so venues, all 10% is the standard for me in L.A., um, other people like caterers and stuff, I try to get them down to like 5% or even try to work um, kind of a two-way street if we can. Um, I stopped doing that because I found that I was selling more of their services than they were mine. So I wanted to make money in addition to my service fee, um, you know, a commission from them. Now with my business partner as is, we're 50% partners in the business. So we do have a trade that he every client that comes through he funnels into me and then i don't sell actually as much as his, of his food as he does of my bars so it, it's pretty reciprocal and and uh, i also helped bring corporate clients into his business which he was super thankful for so um and that's one thing if you guys ever do think about getting a legit like business partner make sure you find someone that doesn't have the same skill set you have because if you're partnering with someone you want to partner with someone that can double your growth because especially if you're going to do like a 50 50 partnership or if you, you do 25 percent, but whatever you want them to double what uh, the equity that they're going to take like first year and then after that triple and so on and so forth um or else you know why partner with a person that that you know if you can do all everything that they do so um caterers are great and even outside of just equity partnerships the affiliate before my catering partner now i had i had luke's catering um, um spotted hen and it all started off because i was charging a 15 percent service fee i just hire him for some one job or two and then say hey moving forward if you want me to recommend you we need to work out a back-end commission and that's because i remember earlier talking about how do you approach the caterers first job hire him for free just hire him bring him in under your service fee you're going to make 15 percent on the front end from the customer and um and then after that, you can set up the commission if you don't feel comfortable setting that up straight out of the gate. Amazing. We do have a bunch of questions that keep coming in, but I do have to cut this short. I have to get prepped for a coaching call. So I hope, I hope, I mean, it seems like everybody has really found a ton of value out of this. I know that I personally have loved it. If you want more of Joel, again, there's a demo on Thursday. He will be speaking on uh, getting corporate events at, uh, in the mobile bar boot camp, which is Sunday. Um, tickets for that are still on sale. We do have a handful of those left. Um, I will be sending out an email with the link to the replay, which is going to take forever to download because it's now almost like two hours long, um, but also information, all the other stuff that I've talked about. And so if you've hung on this far, which 44 of you have, that's really amazing. Um, you know, uh, thank you. Thank you, yeah, Lee. Awesome. Thank you, Joel. <laughs> Lee. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate the time and yeah, jump onto one of our other webinars and, or go to our Facebook group if you have a burning question and I'll answer questions on the Facebook group. Um, so go there if we didn't get to your question today and I'll, I'll answer it there. Awesome. Cool. Yay. Thanks, guys. Thanks everyone for bearing with us. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Joel. And uh, we'll be back. <laughs> awesome.